بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله شهدوا لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهدوا أن سيدنا محمد عبد الرسول جزاك الله خير وسلينا for hosting this great program uh, my greatest appreciation both you uh, Kathy and Ashley both of you for the tremendous work you're doing you for speaking out about the horrible injustice your family has faced and Kathy I bother her many times a year whenever the FBI knocks on the door of a member of the Muslim community in the New York area I give her a ring and she sends them running and they don't come back <laughs> And it's critical that we recognize the challenges our community faces and also recognize the opportunities we have to stand up for ourselves, to be proud of our faith and our identity, and to give back to this country. The truth of the matter is this. The greatest gift that we have is our faith. It is our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We came by the will of Allah. And we exist always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us, with him witnessing us, he is with you wherever you are. He is closer to us than we are to each other right now, witnessing every thought of ours, everything we see, say, and hear, and ultimately we will return to him. And Islam is that vehicle by which we can come to know our creator before we return to our creator. So it is the greatest gift that we have. And I emphasize that because too often out of our fear, out of abuse, out of Islamophobia, out of fear of discrimination and harassment, out of fear of the FBI, we may actually hold back from practicing our faith when indeed our faith is the greatest gift that we have because it's the way we can know our Creator. So never let fear of others get between you and having a connection with the Creator of the heavens and the earth. That's the first and foremost point. My brothers and sisters, people sometimes sacrifice their faith, uh, their faith or they sacrifice for their faith. They sacrifice their relationship with Allah or they sacrifice for their relationship with Allah. They sacrifice their deen or they sacrifice for their deen. But if you truly appreciate what a gift your faith is, you will never sacrifice it out of fear of others. And the fact of the matter is, is that alhamdulillah, as Muslims in America, we have absolutely no excuse not to practice our faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us, and the law is also with us if we understand it, and we defend it, and we stand strong for it. The truth of the matter is, America is one of the best places in the world to be a practicing Muslim, despite the injustices that we've heard, and the injustices that we will talk about, and that we will cover. And inshallah, I will share with you some information on how to protect against. So, never be scared to practice your faith. If you can't practice Islam here, you can't practice it anywhere. Here the FBI comes to speak to, to me, hey, where were you? And my answer is none of your damn business. And they can't mess with that, brothers and sisters. But I try that in Syria, and I'll be meeting Allah very soon. That's the truth of the matter. But also, don't like, maybe don't say none of your damn business. Well, <laughs> not until you go to law school at least. But no, and we'll, 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 we'll get into that. But that, that's a, that, that really is a testament to the principles of liberty and justice that this country offers. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about protecting against, uh, how to protect. Really, there's two things to protect against. Protect yourself from being an FBI informant and protect yourself from being the subject of a sting. If you can identify how to protect against these two things, you've got nothing to worry about. But otherwise, if you don't, then everybody has something to worry about. During the elections, I got a call, a calls from over 100 people across the country who were visited by the FBI. And the agents admitted to me that they had no reason to question these Muslims. And they were asking them, do you know any terrorists? Do you fund terrorism? Do you know anybody who funds terrorism? I said, why the heck would they know anybody like that? Just because of their religion? That's unconstitutional that you are targeting people simply because of their religion. And, and what offends me about the FBI, what offends me about what they're doing, is it offends me as an attorney and as a Muslim and as an American long before it offends me as a Muslim. It's, it's against the principles of liberty and justice that the U.S. Constitution is supposed to protect. So my humble advice to you on the solution, and then I'll get into 10 reasons why you should never speak to the FBI without a lawyer. Because I really believe that if we never speak to the FBI without a lawyer, and we never speak to anybody about something unethical or haram, then we got nothing to worry about. Really. Those are the two key factors. We need to, number one, never speak to the FBI without a lawyer. And somebody's coming to you, talking to you about breaking the law, while well, they're asking you to disobey Allah, and that's something we don't do. That's something we don't do. So if you can protect against those two things, inshallah, you'll be uh, safe. My request, really, and my humble request for all of our brothers and sisters, because I see such a vibrant room, I'm excited to see the young faces in the room. Our solution for our success in this life and the next is very simple. Follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
love the sunnah. The sunnah is the way that Allah loves. And when you're connected to the sunnah, you're simply connected to that which the creator of the heavens and the earth loves. So connect with the sunnah. Connect with the ulama, the scholars, who are the inheritors of the prophet. And have the absolute best akhlaq and character and conduct you can. So that when people see you, they fall in love with you. And they fall in love with the message that you come with. And then serve humanity. Fearlessly serve humanity. Speak truth to power. Stand forward against injustice. That is the best weapon against Islamophobia, against FBI abuse, against all of that. Being proud of your faith and your identity. Being humble with humanity and serving God's creation. That is the best weapon against Islamophobia, brothers and sisters. And that's what we need. And be, recognize that Allah has really chosen you for an honorable position as a young American Muslim today. Islamophobia is, in fact, one of the greatest threats that this country faces. It is a tool that is used to undermine freedom, as we heard about. It is a tool that is used to escalate conflict in the world, leading to the deaths of millions of civilians. You think the millions of Muslim children in Iraq, Palestine, Afghanistan, throughout the Muslim world that have been killed through your tax dollars. You think the public would tolerate the countless bloody children and women blown up by U.S. bombs if they saw them as human, if they saw them as equal? Madeleine Albright was asked about the half a million children killed in Iraq and she said, I think the price is worth it. You think she would say the same about five blonde American Christian children? No, she wouldn't. But what Islamophobia does is it dehumanizes Muslims. So locking up for decades in jail is okay and blowing them up overseas is okay. That's how dangerous Islamophobia is, undermining freedom in America for everyone. You know, in Tennessee, they tried to pass a law practicing Islamist treason punishable by 20 years in jail. Undermining freedom at home and escalating conflict overseas. So by challenging Islamophobia, what can we do? We can keep America free at home. We can promote peace in the world. And most importantly, we can connect people with their creator. And therefore strengthen our connection with our creator that we will return to. And who's in the best position to challenge Islamophobia? It's us, American Muslims, here today, proudly holding on to our faith with the best akhlaq and character and conduct and serving those around us. That's the way we change the tide, inshallah. But we can't do that if we're afraid of the FBI. We can't do that if we're afraid we're going to get caught up in the next FBI sting or the next informant uh, problem. So I want to speak to you very briefly today now on the defense. That was the first beginning of my talk was the offense. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the defense. First of all, the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution gives all of you the right never to speak to the FBI without a lawyer. Only the ignorant or the arrogant. Again, only the ignorant or the arrogant, only the ignorant or the arrogant speak to the FBI without a lawyer. That's the bottom line. I'm sorry, if you speak to the FBI without a lawyer, you're ignorant or arrogant. That's my professional legal opinion to you. Never do it, ever. Never. Under no circumstances. You won't be the one person who like, will make it. Yeah, they, exactly. Only the ignorant is you don't know their tactics. You think they're just looking for the bad guys. You don't know that one of the FBI's training manuals, actually one of their training sessions, they were trained that Al-Qaeda is not your enemy, Islam is your enemy. They were literally trained that in, in their training. Um, that doesn't reflect all agents. There's many good agents out there, but it's not your job to know who the good agent and bad agent is. It's your lawyer's job. And Alhamdulillah, through organizations like CARE, the Coalition, MLFA, many others, you have free lawyers who will represent you free of charge whenever the FBI comes. And I tell you, Generally, 90% of the time when the FBI gets a call from us, they just don't call back and they don't bother the person again. You know? So don't speak to the FBI without a lawyer because remember, this goes to my second point. First point is you have the Fifth Amendment. Second point is, if you've done nothing wrong, you can't talk yourself out of trouble. You can only talk yourself into trouble because you're innocent till proven guilty. You don't have anything to prove. So if anybody wants to speak to you, again, it's none of your business. Yes, what you say, and this is the practice, hey, can we speak to you? Sure, with my lawyer present. I don't want to speak to you without my lawyer. Let me have your business card and then contact CARE, contact the MLFA, contact the coalition. There's many groups out there that will give you free legal representation. And generally, once they get a call from us, they just don't even follow up. That's the general rule. So what do you say? I don't want to speak to you without my lawyer. I don't want to speak to you without my lawyer. Let me hear it. I don't want to speak to you without my lawyer. And CARE will provide free lawyers for you. Alhamdulillah. I get calls from all over the country. Literally, people are calling me like terrified. Brother, you'll never believe what happened. The FBI was just at my door. I'm so scared. My life is over. I'm like, 
All right, man, just calm down. Give me his number. Hey, Agent Smith, what's up? Just leave this guy alone. Literally, it's, it's generally that simple. I, I think I a little bit oversimplified, but that's pretty no, much that's it. it. That's how the Nine calls go. And that's what we charge $300 an hour for in private practice, literally. Uh, but we do it for free no, through uh, care, and Kathy just does this pro bono. God bless her. Uh, unless it gets beyond that. Uh, then. Unless it gets beyond that. <laughs> but generally, it doesn't. Generally, it doesn't. So just remember, you can't talk yourself out of trouble. Because what happens is when you sit and speak with them, they fill out a form 302, that becomes the official record of that conversation. You don't get to see that form. And if anything written on that form contradicts what you told them, um, or contradicts something you say later, or contradicts truth, they say, oh, oh, you lied to us. And guess what? Lying to us is punishable by five years in jail. And, uh, but we got a way out of it if you spy on the mosques for us and the hookah lounges and the halal restaurants. Because guaranteed you're going to find the Muslim in one of those three areas. The hookah lounge, the restaurant, or the, uh, hey man, alhamdulillah, deen and dunya, I guess. So they know where to look. They're, you know, they know where to look. But the point is, that's how they recruit informants, by speaking. And when you speak, you contradict. And when you contradict, they use that as leverage. You know, one of the well-respected imams that I know, the FBI showed him a picture of a naked woman and said, because they know our community will buy and pass on and Facebook and tweet every rumor they hear, and they love to gossip, and they, they love to get involved in things that are not their business. You know, may Allah, I mean, really shame on us. Shame on us with how we use our social media. I mean, some people go to hell because of their sins, and other people go to hell because of talking about what they think are other people's sins. Really, be careful how you use your social media. Be careful how you use your tongue. Nothing drags people in hell more than their tongue. Be careful. But the FBI knows we don't know our hadith, right? We don't know the hadith that say don't backbite, don't gossip, assume the best, don't believe everything you hear. We know we're disconnected from those hadith. So the FBI goes to an imam and says, hey imam, you know, you can be the next Facebook scandal. We're going to show you these pictures, see these pictures of these naked women. They're going to testify that you're using them for prostitution unless you work for us. True story. You know, they play these games. Cointel Pro, our African American brothers and sisters have been dealing with it for generations. They sent Martin Luther King a letter, kill yourself or we're gonna expose you as some deviant. You know, so this isn't anything new. Um, they use these leverage tactics to try to turn people into informants, but again, it all starts when you speak to them without a lawyer. You gain nothing by speaking to them without a lawyer. You have everything to lose, however. Silence cannot be used against you. If you say, I don't wanna speak to them, you can't because it's a constitutional right put in to protect the innocent. Now, is the FBI allowed to lie to you? Yes. Are you allowed to lie to them? No. How stupid is it? I was going to say, Dan, just stupid. How stupid is it to talk to somebody who's legally allowed to lie to you and you're not allowed to lie to them? And lying to them can turn you into an informant. Afala ta'aqilun, Allah says. Don't use your intellect. The Prophet wasallam said, Man samata naja. Whoever is quiet is safe. Again, this isn't to protect innocent people, uh, guilty people. This is to protect innocent people from being caught up and having their arms twisted to become informants, to find vulnerable individuals and twist their arms to, for them to agree to commit crimes they never otherwise would have on their own so that they can justify the billions they receive and so that they can continue to, to paint the Muslim community as a threat to gain more power and authority. Uh, that's, that's how the Islamophobia industry within government uh, work. So remember, FBI is allowed to lie to you, you're not allowed to lie to them. And I, I want to give you two examples uh, of uh, FBI abuse, uh, the, uh, of cases that I worked on, and then give you a couple more lessons, and then we'll have some time for the Q&A, inshallah. Um, very simple case. I don't want you to be like Ibrahim Todashev. Ibrahim Todashev is with Allah right now. He was a young man, um, and subhanAllah, FBI wanted to speak to him. So he thought, like many of you think, oh, I got nothing to hide. Sure, I'll be happy to speak with you. The FBI agents interrogated him in his home for six hours in Orlando. After six hours, Ibrahim ended up with three bullet wounds in the back, three in the front, and once right in the top of the head, making sure he was done for good. After six hours of interrogation in his home. He thought he had nothing to hide. He ended up dead. What would he have lost if he said, you know what, I don't want to speak to you without my lawyer? and let us deal with it. If the Qadr were different, he might have still been alive today. It literally cost him his life. Now, what was crazy was when we investigated, here's the problem, our community is so scared. Like nobody in the community wanted to go near that case. And we did, and I got a call from like the Washington Post, from like African-American journalists thanking us for standing up. They're like, yo, if it was an African-American man killed, the African-American community would have stood up, but you Muslims are too scared to stand up for your own. What's wrong with you? Thank you for standing up. 
So alhamdulillah, we did an investigation. And in our investigation, we discovered that the agent who shot and killed Ibrahim was sued twice and investigated four times for beating up suspects, beating up witnesses, and falsifying evidence. That's the kind of guy who's knocking on the doors trying to interrogate Muslims. What we further discovered was that before killing him, they told his friends, you guys either spy on the mosques, hookah lounges, and halal restaurants, or we're going to take away your paperwork and throw you in jail. Those are the kind of things we deal with. You know, and it's unfortunate. We've seen in another case that I worked on in Orlando, they were trying to give an imam, Imam Abu Toba, 20 years in jail. 20 years in jail as a, ter as a terrorist. And the only evidence that they had, just to show you the kind of prosecution they're going with, only evidence they had that he was a terrorist was that he taught the Qur'an, encouraged others to go study the Qur'an in Mauritania, and had a library of 10,000 Islamic books in his computer. Five of which the government didn't like. And I told, the, I told the U.S. attorney, literally in the middle of the courtroom, I yelled at him, I said, what the heck is wrong with you, man? I said, literally, you're going to regret this case for the rest of your life. You're a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. We took an oath to protect the Constitution. You're shredding the Constitution to pieces. You're prosecuting people, giving them, trying to give them decades in jail for exercising their First Amendment right to practice their religion and to read and to write and to speak. And alhamdulillah, and again in that case, we couldn't get any of the Muslim community in the courtroom to support the Imam. The Imam, I saw him in jail, he hugged me, he said, you're the first Muslim I've seen in years. I was in solitary confinement, I saw his legs bleeding because he was in chains 24-7 that rubbed off his skin, so he was always bleeding in solitary confinement. And you know, after we visited him in jail, his situation turned around, alhamdulillah, 180 degrees. Because this needs light, it needs pressure, it needs to know that we will not take this quietly. And alhamdulillah, we testified in his defense, and the judge quoted us verbatim when he released him from prison. He cries every time he sees us. He says, if it wasn't for care, it wasn't for you guys, I'd still be in jail for the next two decades. What? For teaching people the Qur'an. And my fear was if they convicted him, they would convict all of us. But again, in that case, they had an informant. And it all started when that person spoke to the FBI without a lawyer. Look, if you're breaking the law, they're going to get you. They don't need informants and agent provocateurs. And that's not my concern if you're breaking the law. But my concern is the countless innocent people who were taken advantage of, who were uh, entrapped, uh, and who's had their arms twisted to become uh, F um, agent provocateurs. So, unfortunately, we did an audit of the kind of training material the FBI received, and we found thousands of pages of anti-Muslim literature within the FBI training material. You know? So look, it's not your job to know is this a good agent or a bad agent? Is he getting good training or bad training? What's his intentions? Your job is to be a human being, a Muslim, an American. Be yourself. And when the FBI calls you, when they show up at your place of employment, say, listen, man, I'm a busy businessman. I'm a busy teacher. I'm a busy student. I don't got time for you. But my lawyer does. So give me your business card. My lawyer will call you. That's it. 90% of our problems would be solved if we just acted about that. You have no excuse. Only the ignorant and the arrogant speak to the FBI without a lawyer. And listen, I'm going to be very frank. Right now, who wants to speak to Trump? The FBI. And what's Trump's lawyers telling him? Don't. He's the president. <laughs> Sorry. I've avoided calling him that for like, I don't know, almost a year or two now. I feel a little sick in my stomach. But he's supposed to be the, the commander in chief. And even his lawyers say, don't speak to the FBI without a lawyer. So who are me and you to speak to them without a lawyer? Don't speak to the FBI without a lawyer. You'll be fine, inshallah. You got nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Don't hold yourself back. Be involved. Be present. Be visibly Muslim. Be a representative of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Visibly, outwardly, and through your service. And let your service be a means of people falling in love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Let that be your gratitude that Allah guided you. And be a mercy for humanity. Rasulullah was sent as a mercy, and this country needs mercy. Be that mercy by being unapologetically Muslim and in service of humanity. And don't worry about the FBI. Just don't speak to them without a lawyer. Thank you, and God bless you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi There could be an informant that approaches you threatening a scandal. Um, so you didn't mention, is this a bluff? If you were to say, hey, I uh, actually want to wait for my lawyer, is that a bluff, or will they actually follow through with that scandal? Um, for one... Uh, that's a great question. And no, generally, they are bluffs. Generally, they're bluffs. Uh, and generally, if you don't speak to them, they're not going to have a chance to threaten you. So w what they do is they'll knock, hey, who is that FBI 
what do you want? We want to talk. Well, how many of you are there? There's two. They always come in two. Well, okay, talk to each other outside. You know, <laughs> that's it. You know, <laughs> so don't 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 let them in your house. And it's a lot of people's hubris and arrogance lets them getting into a conversation. Do not have a conversation with them. Don't let them in. You could you know crack your door open. Just give me your card. My lawyer will call you. That is it. Don't have a chance for them to make any threats. And so that's if we know that they're FBI, but in a lot of these cases, the, like, you know, they sort of infiltrate into your life. So how will you bring up the whole lawyer case if you don't even know that they're FBI agents to begin with? Excellent. So in terms of now agent provocateurs and informants, look, just assume that somebody you know, at least somebody in this room may be an informant. I and mean, that's the truth of the matter. I always assume somebody I know is an informant, but that does not impact my brotherhood, how I live my life, how I practice my faith, because I have a transparent faith. It's a beautiful faith. And if somebody's talking about things that, um, again, not talking, about, we talk about political things, US injustice, political activism all the time. But you hear somebody talking about something that's clearly illegal, well, that's a big red alert that they're, they're probably working for the government or they're just seriously misguided. Either way, they need help or they need intervention. And that's when you contact trusted local community leaders and bring that to their attention so they can deal with it. And hopefully they have a protocol in place for how to address it. Which um, I wanted to know whether if you're in a court of law, can you hold a FBI agent accountable for such acts that you guys spoke about today, like wrongfully uh, convicting someone? <laughs> it's very difficult because a lot of times you have to, to um, the person has to be acquitted, which almost never happens in the first place, to show that it was a wrongful conviction. Like we know it's a wrongful conviction, but according to the courts, they're not wrongful convictions. So it's very, very difficult to go after. They have to, it's uh, very, very rare. They have to like be killing people and be caught on video doing it or something. And even then, you know, with the police killing people, they don't get held accountable. So there's a lot of work to be done there.